This podcast is on pediatric CT physics. I want to talk about how to minimize radiation exposure in children um, and talk various aspects related to pediatric CT imaging. First and foremost qu question is, why should we be concerned? For these reasons, there are a number of media articles which always scares, the, scares uh, about the CT imaging. In fact, one of them back in 2001 kind of changed the whole field because at that time, the CT imaging in pediatric was almost done as same as the adults, so therefore there was not much attention paid for the protocol settings. Um, this article kind of like uh, shook everybody or took everybody by surprise. From then onwards, we see a dramatic change in the protocol settings, uh, doing a separate uh, different protocol setting for the pediatric imaging versus the adults, which is justifiably uh, to be done so. However, followed that, then there are also constantly different articles, which is um, causing more concern to the patient rather than actually delivering the message. And in because of all these reasons, it's important that we examine about pediatric CT imaging. And again, we all read comic characters. Here is an example, these type of things which we often pop up and see. Uh, what this radiation can do to us and so forth. Again, um, this is the uh, issue which we constantly uh, experience and it's important to separate the myth versus the fact. But there are some reasons why children are more vulnerable to radiation than adults. First and foremost is younger bodies are more sensitive to radiation. They also have a longer lifetime for radiation effects to impart because one of the radiation effects is stochastic effect, which usually takes about three to 20 years to show up. So in that case, the pediatric in children is important because the longer lifetime for radiation effects to impart. Thirdly, for the same given scan techniques, children absorb more radiation than adults because the body mass and so forth. So in bottom line, if the exposure is same, the children effective dose will be greater than the adult effective dose and the effective dose in a way relates to the risk from the radiation. Therefore, children are at a higher risk compared to the adult risk for the same radiation exposure. Also, one of the risks is the radiation induced cancer risk and this graph basically shows the attributable lifetime risk versus the age at time of exposure. For most of our understanding, we use a constant uh, uh, risk factors such as 5% per sievert. To, to um, also want to emphasize that sievert is a very large quantity of dose. We only talk about millisievert in imaging. That's one thousandth of the sievert doses. Either way, in this graph, for a lot of the radiation protection understanding, we use this model of 5% per sievert. But in reality, there is a little bit slightly different uh, effect for different age group. Children are at three to two to three times at a higher risk than adults. Compared to a person aged greater than 50, the risk is one fifth to one tenth of that of an adult. This has to be balanced, and that's one of the reasons why this is an introductory uh, introduction um, to lead to what we can do to minimize or optimize dose. So the next question is, what can we do to optimize dose? For a long time, I used to have this statement as what can we do to lower dose? Now, from past few years, I'm changing the word lower to optimized dose for the reason I'm going to explain later. Optimized dose is the right word because the radiation dose has to be optimized. It should not be minimal or maximum or lower or higher. It should be the right dose for the imaging to be done. What can we do? So one way is what should we do to reduce radiation risk? First of all, it's important to examine whether the uh, one can explore using ultrasound and MRI prior to ordering an X-ray exam, ideally, to exam to see if this this a, 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 a diagnosis can be done with ultrasound or MRI, or a particular clinical pathology is best is, uh, seen with ultrasound or MRI. If that is not the case, and if the X-ray exam is important, one has to ensure the X-ray exam is absolutely necessary. The next step is to discuss the option to optimize the dose. As a radiologist, it is also important to understand the radiation dose issues. Some of the podcasts I've already discussed earlier about CT dose. One can visit to get a, 
um, to revisit that particular podcast. Also, the radiologists are also need to review the request for high dose studies because they need to make sure that those high dose studies are well warranted. Finally, it is important to use the dose optimized protocol. There are a number of practical steps to minimize radiation risks, such as the patient selection. Selecting the patient for the right type of studies is very critical in minimizing or optimizing the radiation risk. Second is the triaging the protocol. When I meant triaging the protocols, selecting the right protocol for the right study and also to make sure these protocols are suited for the child size. This, the, when, in such means, selecting the right tube techniques, tube voltage, tube current and so forth to fit the particular study. Thirdly, focus on the repeat patients. When I say repeat patients, we see in the clinic in the um, some pediatric patients are followed for a, a particular reason. When they are followed means they are getting a repeat scans over a period of time. In, in such situation, one can make a, a judicious just, uh, decision on limiting the scan region. Example, patients with hydrocephalus are often uh, followed up with CTs to make sure that the shunt is in the right place. In such situation, if the patient comes back for the follow-up, one can limit the scan to the region of the shunt placement rather than scanning the entire head. By doing so, without changing any parameter, the radiation risk is minimized because you are limiting the scan region. In the past few years, the CT technology has matured quite dramatically such that the tube current modulation is now need to be done on all patients including pediatric patient scanners very efficiently are very efficient in ex in um, using this tube current modulation tube voltage selection even though some scanners might say it's an automatic tube voltage selection there is not the it's not automatic it's more like the user selects and in that case the user needs to select the right tube voltage for the patient thinner the patient such as pediatric it is always advisable to use lower tube voltage for the reasons I'm going to explain later. Collimation. Collimation is very um, straightforward. It is important to collimate to the scan region of interest, thereby uh, avoiding the unnecessary anatomy from being scanned. Finally, when we are talking about radiation risk, we also need to consider the other risks such as sedation and contrast and especially when parents or the physicians are worried about doing a pediatric CT on a uh, doing pediatric CT because of the radiation risk, they also need to compare the benefits of the CT and compare the risk of CT compared to the other risks such as sedation and contrast, which in some time the sedation and contrast risks are even greater or higher uh, and demonstrated compared to the radiation risk. What is the radiation the CT procedures mix in the US. According to recent national surveys, the, the among all the CT procedures done in the in the US, nearly about 10% of the CT is for the pediatric population. So as of 2006, the number of total number of procedures done was 82 million procedure. 10% of it comes out almost close to 8.2 million CTs done on pediatric population. This particular trend of 10% um, of the uh, oral CT procedure has been a, has been same from past few years. On this particular slide shown also is the mixture of inpatient and outpatient and emergency CT procedures and um, in, in to my understanding in each of these situation the pediatric population uh, scanned in each of the subsection is approximately 10 percent of what we see across here. Radiation dose, there are a number of radiation dose optimization strategies. Among them are dose modulation, reduced tube voltage, use of iterative reconstruction, minimizing the scan region, and using scanners which has the dynamic collimators. First and foremost is how to minimize the CT dose in children is to perform only necessary CT examination. That is the overarching principle behind any of the imaging. 
adjust exposure parameters for pediatric CT based on child size, based on the region scanned, based on the organ system scanned, and also the type of scan resolution needed. It is important to minimize multiphasic CT exam and only do when it is absolutely necessary. Here is the slide showing the number of scan parameters and image quality in CT, basically grouped to different categories, which I have discussed at length in the previous podcast. Coming focusing to this particular pediatric CT, there, there are a number of ways one is can optimize the CT protocol. In this particular study, its authors have done is, especially on the on the follow-up patients, they have reduced, um, subsequently reduced the scans, as uh, uh, the techniques, um, on the subsequent scan and demonstrated that reduction of the scan technique had not diminished the clinical pathology of diagnosis. Therefore, in a particular conditions, when the for example in this scan they're looking at the mass in the kidney which shows up even with the lower technique and at a lower radiation dose. So it's important to optimize the protocol based on the tech, based on the pathology we are trying to diagnose. Here's an example what can be achieved on modern scanner. Here is a ch chest CT of a three month old. This is done because the complication of surgery in the neonate um, of shunt occlusion. What's shown here is like this particular chest CT in a three month old baby was done at a lot at 100 kV at a very low technique of 34 effective MAS resulting in a CTDI wall of 1 milligray and which is results to an effective dose less than a 1 millisievert which is very um, uh, very ideal. Second is a two potential selection. What's shown here is to demonstrate the tube voltage selection uh, works to our advantage especially for a small patient. For a small patient, the iodine to noise con iodine contrast to noise ratio increases with lower tube voltage. At the same time, the radiation dose relative to 120 kV decreases with lower tube voltage. Therefore, selecting the appropriate tube voltage may have a double advantage in pediatric CT population. In fact, most pediatric CT um, where this uh, where the smaller size it is advised to do at 100 kV or even lower kV. Iterative reconstruction. I consider this as a black box because the most manufacturers uh, there are most iterative reconstruction algorithms due to manufacturer appropriateness act like black box. But the overall principle is the objective is to enable user to acquire CT data at low dose and improve image quality with iterative process. Shown here is an example of a uh, abdominal image reconstructed with a standard reconstruction filtered back projection technique versus the iterative reconstruction technique. You can see the image noise is improved and for the same uh, and the technique is done at a lower technique resulting in a lower dose. What about collimation? Collimation is um, even though it's now, uh, it's, uh, it's very straightforward, but often we miss it. Here's an example. This is this is an example shown on a um, for a DR image, a digital radiogra radiographic image. These days with the digital imaging, uh, one can get an image done on a, on a patient and present it for a radiologist to read this. So they are reading here, they are assuming that patient was scanned exposed only to the chest area. But when you unmask the uh, surrounding, you see here the entire baby was uh, exposed. The collimation same thing applies in CT also. Limiting to the scanned region makes a lot of difference in minimizing the radiation risks. What is radiation measurement? Again, this has been discussed at length. CT dose is not measured directly on patient. And the same thing applies for the pediatric patients also. And the CT dose is measured using standard phantoms. They mimic human tissues, but then are used to estimate the patient dose and risk. Nowadays, there has been a new paradigm shift in understanding the CT dose with respect to the pediatric CT. AAPM, the American Association of Physicists in Medicine, 
has put out what is called as the size specific dose estimate because the CTDI wall displayed on the scanner it is specific to two different size of the phantom 16 centimeter versus 32 body size of anywhere in between is only approximated therefore there is a chance of underestimating or overestimating to avoid this this concept of spy specific dose estimates is introduced which basically converts this yes, one can convert the ctdi value multiplied by a conversion factor based on the size of the particular patient to get a more estimation of this more relevant estimation of the size specific dose estimate and this value is quite is sufficient or required to calculate the organ dose risk and so forth for a, for a site performing accreditation undergoing accreditation from the ecr here are the dose limits basically telling like for a pediatric if a site performing pediatric imaging their protocol for a pediatric head cannot exceed 35 milligram of ctdi wall and if their protocol exceeds more than 40 the site will fail the accreditation the purpose of the accreditation is to uh, make sure that the sites and the, the facilities are meeting a minimum standards and they are within these dose ranges so therefore if a site is accredited by acr it basically implies that their protocols are 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 within this particular required limits allowed by the accreditation agency we have heard a lot of um, topics and articles about the pediatric CT imaging among them the best one of the most successful uh, um, social media campaign success is the image gently we also see image wisely applied for adult imaging choosing wisely is another forum for limiting some of the unnecessary studies but image gently is a, f a forum where a number of useful resources are available and position papers discusses what can be done to minimize the risk for the pediatric imaging it basically the purpose is to increase awareness for need to decrease radiation dose to children and adult with medical x-ray imaging so here are the take-home message used ct dose modulation while doing pediatric ct imaging select low tube voltage less than 120 kV so 100 or 80 kV is quite suitable for most pediatric CT imaging third collimate to the region of interest to minimize the unnecessary radiation exposure to the outside the region of interest utilize iterative reconstruction and it is important to remember to ensure image quality is not jeopardized at cost of lowering the dose let me stop here we want to have a situation where uh, the CT dose is sometime can be driving the imaging in reality the imaging should drive the CT doses thank you